Detective Patrick Major of the Chicopee Police Department has taken up another responsibility in recent years. As commander of the department's special operations, he oversees active shooter training. With more mass shooting incidents being reported across the country, it's training that's now being given at area schools and businesses too. Training that, while now considered necessary, Major says he hopes that it never needs to be used. Our team has been up and running since 1994. It's when it was first created. Uh, a few individuals on the department decided it was probably uh, a necessity, giving uh, the attitude of what was going on at that time. Uh, it was started up and uh, they began a training regimen and started to get outfitted and to prepare for any events that might happen at that time. And so part of what that team does is the active shooter response um, within the department. What does that look like in terms of training? How is it different than typical training that a police officer might receive? We receive yearly training and our department has incorporated it through our, uh, our training office. They've set up training situations you know, to, to gear us for what might possibly happen during an active shooter event. And so what is um, <clears throat> involved in the, the nuts and bolts of the active shooter training? You know, what's it designed to teach the officers? Basically, it's designed to teach that uh, the officers that are responding to, the event, to that event have to be able to gain access to the building that they're responding to, uh, respond direct to the threat that's happening at that time and then also to uh, treat casualties that they might come across after they've stopped the threat. And we he we've heard a lot about um, the fact that these trainings go on, not only for law enforcement officers, but for in school settings too, right? Absolutely. And so what's that like? Because you have teachers, you have students, presumably some of whom are, are really young. Um, is that a different type of training? It is. Uh, we work with uh, the state police. They have a program out there, the Enhanced Lockdown Program, and that's uh, fairly well known throughout Western Mass, the region. And we go into the schools, we give the administrators, the teachers, a block of instruction on lockdown protocols, what to do, uh, how to respond based on the threat that they're facing at that time. And then uh, after we've done that training, then we do some drills involved that gets everybody kind of in the motion of what they need to do during that time. And so are you working with the teachers first individually on those drills and we then bringing in the students too? We work with the staff. Uh, the students don't necessarily partake in the, the classroom portion of the instruction, but they do take part in the lockdown drills and they're instructed by their uh, teachers or paras on what to do during those events. And so for younger kids in particular, I'm thinking, you know, the kindergarten age, maybe through the fourth or fifth grade, what are you saying to them? Because I imagine that that can be very scary for some of those kids. It can be stressful, but when we go in and do the lockdown drills, we go in there very, very low key, you know, professional. We, we have our, our normal uniforms on, our soft uniforms on. Uh, go in there and tell them that they did a good job based on how they're set up in the classroom, you know, give them little high fives and hand claps. Uh, we may point out some, uh, ideas or, or pointers as to how things can be done better, but the kids themselves are actually very receptive to the training. And are you, is it largely teaching them where to hide? Are you teaching them to evacuate the building? Is it a mix? It's, it's a mix of what's going on and it's all threat dependent um, based on if there was a hostile intruder coming into the school, uh, where they might be located. There's different responses that could be uh, applicable to that situation. We do tell them basically, you know, you can a barricade or hide within the room that you're in. If you can evacuate safely, you can do that as well. And we also kind of teach the, the staff uh, what we call a targeted aggressive response, which is, we like to refer to that as to as a uh, last response. If somebody's coming into their area and they don't have a choice to get out or to barricade anymore, then we kind of give them some hints as to what they could do. And so what is that? Are you teaching them to fight back? If it's to save their life, yes. And so how have people responded to that? Do you, are people reluctant? Are people, yeah, so we get a, We get a wide range of response. Uh, some people we get that deer in the headlights look, uh, but it all comes down to conditioning and training. You know, having a plan, training that plan and, and drilling that plan. Uh, you can't expect somebody to be able to react in an instance if they haven't trained, if they don't know what to do. That's where we get that uh, fight, flight or freeze response. And we don't want them to freeze. We want them to have something, 
a thought process going on as to what they could do at that time. And how often do people, do you recommend that people um, hold these types of drills? Because I imagine there's a balance between wanting people to be prepared, but also not scaring people unnecessarily. True. Uh, on average, we drill at the school twice a year. May not always be lockdown drills. Um, we do evacuation, relocation, reunification training, and we plan to do those drills as well mixed in. So it's part of the, their annual safety response that the, the schools have that's put out by the, I believe, the Department of Public Safety. No different than fire drills or, or bad weather drills. Uh, this is just getting added into that mix as well. Yeah. And are you doing, are you seeing more people reaching out to the department, whether it's businesses or even, I could see a family saying, look, we have a, we have a fire emergency exit plan at my house. Should we also have something for an intruder? We haven't seen so much uh, individualized requests for that, but we do recommend people have an emergency plan, whether it is for you know the fire, like you said, um, or to have a, an intruder coming in their house. It, at the basics, it should be j just be know where to go, maybe have a safe meetup place, who to call, you know, instruct especially young children how to call 911, and uh, you know, basic uh, ideas like that. Back in March, uh, we saw Chicopee police and others in the area respond to several th threats that students had posted on social media. How are you patrolling things like that? Because it's, you know, years ago it may have been a phone call that someone might have placed, but now you have, in addition to that, the added social media element. How is that policed? It does make it difficult. Uh, the school department themselves, I guess the best way to describe it, they have like a, a sniffer software program that kind of scans through different social media networks looking for possible threats against specific areas, you know, different schools. If uh, they receive something that, or something pops up on their, on their radar, so to speak, they give us a, a call and we begin an investigation into it. Um, there's the, the swatting um, threats that are, or were, uh, seen a few years ago throughout the country and also hoaxes that we've had called in from overseas. Uh, for people who aren't aware, swatting threat, what is exactly behind that? What does that mean? Basically, a uh, swatting threat is an individual calling in a, uh, a fake threat at a location to get, you know, a, a SWAT type of response to show up. And we've seen people accidentally harmed Absolutely. as a result of that. So it's something to be taken quite seriously. Very. Um, as we've seen students, high school students in particular, middle school to a certain extent, get more involved um, in speaking out against school shootings and also calling for more gun safety, have you seen students' reaction to police officers change in any way? I think uh, the response to us, from what I've seen, has been very positive. Uh, they show a lot of gratitude, you know, thanking us. We had an incident uh, one of the first days at school this year at uh, Chicopee Comprehensive High School where the school went into lockdown. We had a massive response, several agencies involved, uh, evacuated the school out to a neighboring school and then did a relocation for the parents. There was many uh, parents, students, and teachers involved that were grateful for our response. Um, it's something that we don't necessarily like to do, obviously, but it's something we train to do. We want to keep the students, staff, everybody in the community safe. And by training and doing the lockdown drills and becoming more familiar with the students, they start to see our face, they know who we are, and they know that we're there to help them out.